also, a lot of the time, it's also about transforming our perception. Transforming our perception. In fact, it's conquering the mind. In fact, I think you have heard, I think yesterday, even the newer students, that the, the essence of the teaching of Buddha, remember? When Buddha was asked to essentialize his teachings, he said, commit not a single unwholesome action, cultivate the wealth of virtue, to tame this mind of ours. This is the teaching of Buddha. In fact, the whole point is to tame, that is to transform, to conquer this mind of ours. In fact, Yushin Karambas used to say that in that one line, the rang is, in Tibetan, rang is sem Rang means oneself, one's own mind. Sem is mind. Ndul is to tame or to transform, to conquer. It doesn't say conquer somebody else's mind, your mind. Because ultimately, it's how you think. As Buddha said, we are what we think. All that we are arise with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. Even I think the world is realizing, California is realizing this, I think. It was pioneer realizing it's all about the mind. So how you think? So therefore, it, it's all up to you in your hand. Sometimes when you say, be happy, actually it's up to us, really, to be happy. Because really, the most important is to transform. This is what in the teaching on this extraordinary teaching on compassion, this tremendous source of teaching on bodhicitta, the way of the bodhisattva called bodhicayautara, guide to the way of bodhisattva life, which is on Dalai Lama attributes as the source of the, if he said any little understanding of, of bodhicitta or of compassion for that matter the bodhisattva life he said comes entirely through this book through this in that it is said that that fear and anguish all rise in the mind that is untamed if you tame your mind then you overcome all fear and all how do you say Negativity. It's also in cognitive therapy they say that. You see, we saw Dalai quoted this number of times also. They say that, according to generally speaking, our perception is always marred by our own projection or our own negativity. Therefore, actually, we don't see reality very much. We think we see reality, but reality is very much marred by our perception. Is that clear? That's why the whole thing most important to transform this mind. In fact, he's only Dalai Lama time and time, particularly recently, in the last few years, he's been saying is Buddhism is not about rituals, not about ceremonies, even Vajrayana Buddhism, he says. It's about transforming the mind. The main thing is transforming the mind, conquering the mind, taming the mind. Because if you transform or conquer, or tame. In fact, you had this teaching anyway. We have these different words, like taming, transforming, conquering, because that covers it all. Also, for some people, taming, they might not like the word taming so much. They may have a reaction. That's also your perception. Yeah. And you might like the word transforming is better, more user-friendly or whatever you call it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, then, and then some might like the word conquering. In fact, the Buddha's name, Buddha is known as Galwa, Galwa. Galwas are victorious ones, the conquerors, who conquer the enemies of negativity, overcome themselves, really. So that if you conquer your mind and transform your mind or tame your mind, tame your mind, transform your mind, conquer your mind. Then your perception, this is the key thing, then your perception and that is to say your experience will also be transformed. Thereby even the appearance and the circumstances will be transformed as a result. And I've kept saying again and again, happiness suffering depends entirely upon your mind. In fact, happiness does not exist objectively. 
is subjective to one's experience. It is said by the great master of the past that it's only the foolish that go for looking for happiness outside themselves. Because once you go looking outside yourself, you have no longer any control. Whereas the wise and learned know that all the happiness, cause of happiness, are present in ourselves, in our mind and heart. So therefore, if you really know how to work with your mind and transform your mind, the mind can be your best friend, the best teacher. The most wonderful thing is the mind. In fact, as Dalai Lama uh, says, he quotes the great Kadamba master. That's the master of the training of the mind, of compassion, the great masters. He quotes them saying that one of the most wonderful quality, one of the most marvelous quality of the mind, that it can be transformed. This has also been found in the research, the scientific research, that is now, I think, uh, uh, made quite a, how do you say? Uh, it's publicly now known. The research has shown that how training the mind in meditation, compassion, all, can actually change also the brain structure. That's why I mean that such as depression, all these things, fundamentally, if you work with the mind, training with the mind, it can be overcome, which is very good news. So it's very important that really uh, uh, the research has shown that how through working with mind we can actually change. In fact, in the case of these lamas who have done from 10 to 40,000 hours of meditation, in fact, some of them are my, my very good friends also. One of them is Minjun Bache, who has probably had the best result. And uh, he's done a lot of meditation. They found that actually the parts of brain, in the case of these lamas, you see, the parts of brain that form positive emotions are always high. And they're lit up, not only when they practice, but even when they're not practicing. So I tease people say there's a permanent damage on them. <laughs> they're always happy. Whereas the negative aspect, such as dissatisfaction, depression, you know, kind of, you know, all the domain of ego are actually down. So very much. And, uh, and also they found that they have a tremendous such as composure, equanimity. Even in the face of great difficulties, they can maintain the deep peace. And they have a tremendous attunement to other people's emotions. And you know, they can understand. And also from that comes a great compassion, universal compassion, which is the source of benefit. And this is what we need in the world more than anything else to conquer the mind. So that's why really the most important is transforming the mind. And in that also, in Buddhism, you see in the t these teachings, uh, one thing that comes very important is what is called, the, some call it Buddhist philosophy, but main thing is ultimate view. In Buddhism is the, what's called Shunyata, or Tibetan Tongbani, which is very badly translated in English as emptiness. That's not, it's not, I mean, that will come later anyway. It's not empty in the sense of nothingness. What it really, really means is when we purify all our distortion, empty of distortion, empty of a concept, empty of, you understand? All this, and see things more really purely, objectively, truly see, have the insight. That's why with the meditation of calm abiding, of shamatha, then the clear insight of a person at begin to dawn, you begin to see more deeply how interdependent nature of everything, as well as you begin to see that how everything is just our perception. And you may notice that sometimes when you're really worked up about something, you know, you get really kind of, uh, how do you say, uh, you really uh, feel very, very uh, intense and passionate and you know, uh, get really angry and, you know, really, but then when the all the story dissolved, it's just simply a storm in a teacup, making a mountain out of a molehill. It's an English expression, you know that. And so which basically it means that, that it's all just simply at the end of the day, it's just all illusory. 
I mean, illusory, not when it appears, doesn't look illusory. When it's over, when you look back, it's illusion. And the thing is to bring that understanding when things are happening to you. I like that American expression, that this is not happening to me. <laughs> That's very good. This is not happening to me. Not as a complaint, but you know, really, seriously, if you realize. So the thing is, the whole the view is to empty the mind of its uh, distortion of negative emotions. Ignorance, negative emotions, and which create negative actions, which are the cause of suffering. And we create this world of our own, a karmic world. The karma is actually, ultimately, karma has to do with how you think, how your perception is. That's why, really, we need to, like, for example, there are now 400 students, which are quite extraordinary, doing three retreats in Dabli, which is amazing. I've been saying to them time and time again, the most important thing is transforming the mind. When you talk about whether you purified karma or not, is to do with how your mind is purified, how you react, how you see, how you view things. Whether you do it the same kind of ni 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 way, uh, or whether you just free and see positive. Like for example, there was one example where I actually complained to a Lama about how in France, I don't know whether it's happening in America or not, they have what's called Buddha Bar. You know Buddha Bar? I think you may have a Buddha Bar CD is very popular. So the thing is that uh, Buddha is very, very tolerant, in fact. Even when bring Buddha in Buddha Bar, you know, uh, and I mentioned about Buddha Bar, you know, it's like a, the, the Lama said, oh, how wonderful the activity Buddha is, you know. So you know, that's the way we're looking at. You know. yeah. Anyway, so very much your perception, your perception, and your projection, 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 lot of projection. I mean, this is the heaven of therapy. If you really look deeply, it's all your projection. It's all your projection. It's all projection at the end of the day. You purify your past experience maybe with your father, mother. All oh, this is your perception changing it. Your experience, what's stuck in your mind, that experience. The reality is no longer your child anyway. You're a grown up man, but still we're stuck with our father, mother, what happened to you in childhood. It's a perception that got stuck. You understand? That needs to be purified. So a lot of time also, I find projection is something. In fact, interestingly, in the teaching on the pardos, which are the, for example, like the Tibetan Book of the Dead, and then also the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, comes some teaching of the pardos, which are the teaching on life and death. And then that, the teaching for this life, which is, you know, really main, teaching for the part of this life. He said the main task for us is through wisdom of listening and hearing, wisdom of reflection, contemplation, wisdom, meditation, and application. What we had to do is purify our perception, purify our projection, you understand? And to really realize the enlightened mind, which is hidden there. We all have the enlightened mind the potential of enlightenment. And to realize the essence of mind, the nature of mind, the compassion of mind, realize our enlightened Buddha nature. That's the task. That's why the main thing is to work with the perception. Work with the perception. 